What's going on guys? Today I'm bringing you my predictions for the 2021 NHL regular season. If you guys haven't seen yet, there's all new divisions. We have the Canadian division called the North Division with all seven Canadian teams. The new West Division is essentially the Pacific Division, but we're swapping out the Canadian teams for Colorado, Minnesota, and St. Louis. The Central Division has completely changed. It's only made up of three former Central teams, along with three Atlantic teams, and then two Metro teams. And then the new East Division is essentially the Metro, but we subbed out Carolina and Columbus for Boston and Buffalo. So. Um, looking at them, I think for sure the North and the East are going to be the most competitive divisions. The West and Central are both very top-heavy, some really good teams at the top, and then some really bad teams at the bottom. So getting to my predictions now, guys, we'll start off with the North Division, the Canadian Division. This is one I'm super excited to see. Um, obviously, I'm in Canada, so I'll probably mostly be getting those games on TV. I think Edmonton playing Calgary 10 times a year is going to be awesome. I should mention too, for the regular season, all these divisions are only playing teams within their division. So uh, the North, which is the Canadian division, plays everyone 9 to 10 times. And then the West, Central, and East, three American divisions, play everyone 7 to 8 times. So should have some really good rivalries building up. But getting into these predictions now, guys, I feel like I've done enough talking. Start with the North division, all seven Canadian teams. I feel bad for them, but I think last place in that division will be the Ottawa Senators. Although they have improved in the offseason, signing Dadnov, trading for Matt Murray, I think, you know, both are going to be pretty big pieces. Um, the fact of the matter is, I would say Dadnov and Murray probably step in as two of their top five players. So uh, when you have two new guys stepping in as top five players, it just kind of shows you how you really didn't have a lot of talent to work with before. And I feel like although they're nice additions, uh, those two guys really don't push them over the playoff hump, especially in what I think might be the most competitive division here in the Canadian division. Um, not only are all the teams really competitive, I think, outside of maybe Ottawa, but the fact that there's seven teams makes, just makes it you know even more congested. It's gonna be very, very competitive. So honestly, after Ottawa, I feel like any Canadian team could make the playoffs. So it was so hard to choose like who was gonna have next at the sixth spot. But uh, for me, it's the Montreal Canadiens, simply because I think the trade of Domi for Anderson was a bit of a downgrade. Kelly Price isn't getting younger. Shea Weber's not getting younger. They did sign Tyler DeFleur, which I thought was a really nice signing. But um, basically looking at them, I think that their young players really need to step up for them to make the playoffs. Uh, looking at guys like Kokinyemi, Nick Suzuki. If that doesn't happen, I just don't see them uh, being one of the top four teams in the North. But if it does, I think they're definitely in the mix. Um, after that, the number five spot, I have the Vancouver Canucks. So again, Canadian division, I think is going to be super, super tough. Canucks had a bit of a run last year. Uh, strange offseason, some lateral moves, losing Markstrom, signing Holtby, um, losing Tanev, training for Schmidt, who they essentially got for free. Uh, they did lose Stetcher, didn't really replace him, lost to Foley, and didn't really replace him either. So I do think they're a little bit worse now this year than they were last year. We'll see if JT Miller can kind of keep up the production he had last season. But uh, for them, I think it's going to come right down to the wire. I have them getting fifth, but honestly, in my mind, they're literally, it comes down to like the last game or two of the season. They missed like by a point or two. Uh, the team that I have just barely edging out on them is the Winnipeg Jets in the fourth spot. Um, I think Hellebuck proved last year he's an elite goaltender. Even if Hellebuck doesn't play quite as good this season, I feel like the defense in front of him should be a lot better. As I got Dylan DeMello now for the entire season, hopefully Morris, he doesn't get injured again. They signed Derek Forbert. So I feel like they'll be okay there. And then in terms of their offense, they honestly might have the best offense in this division, which I think is a pretty bold claim, but I like their top six a lot. Uh, you got Connor, Shifley, Wheeler probably as the first line. Then you got Ehlers, Stastny, who they essentially got for free, and Line A as a second line. I think that top six matches up with anybody. Uh, for sure, the second line, I think, is probably the strongest second line in the division. Um, you have better top lines, of course, with Edmonton, if they say were to put McDavid and Drysdale together. Toronto's top line, for sure, is better. But I really like that second line. Even their bottom six, I think, might be one of the better bottom six in this division. So Winnipeg, I think, really good team throughout. Definitely, though, Hellbuck still needs to play well. If Hellbuck is shaky at all, they're not making the playoffs. Um, after that, the third spot of the Calgary Flames. Could probably call them the Calgary Canucks. Uh, they got Tanner from Vancouver last year. They got Jacob Markstrom from Vancouver. I think there's actually a third guy who I'm forgetting about. They also got from Vancouver. Not a very important player, though. So um, Calgary, of course, gets a couple of nice players from Vancouver. Um, I think that they have a really good goalie now in Markstrom. The fact that Riddick's his backup, I mean, they're going to be solid in net. Uh, defensively still led by Giordano, they got Hannafin, they got Anderson, I think they look good on D, and then offensively I think Chuck showed he's a player this year. Goudreau kind of had a down year last season, so if he can just get back to form, uh, Monaghan, Lindholm, I think Calgary's one of the more balanced teams in this division. Then we go to the number two spot, speaking of the Palo Alberta, I have Edmonton there, which would mean Edmonton and Calgary would actually play each other in the first round of the playoffs, which would be pretty cool. So Edmonton I think just has arguably the two best players in the NHL, McDavid and Saddle. 
they have to be a playoff team with those guys. Now, losing Clefbaum is huge for them. I could honestly see Edmonton struggling, maybe only getting fourth, potentially even fifth in this division because of that. But uh, bringing in Tyson Berry, I think he definitely has like a prove-it season to show. You know, last year was a bit of a down year, weird year in Toronto. And I think he's a very good offensive defenseman, which is what Edmonton's needed, especially a right-handed one. He's just going to be feeding McDavid and Dreisaitl on that power play. Uh, New just still there, good two-way player. Yeah, model looked like a real player last year. As well, I think signing Tyler Turris to be their third-line center gives them a lot more depth now with that offense. Uh, bringing in Cahoon as well, who probably will play with Drysaddle. You can have Nuge on the top line with McDavid. Literally whoever has the third wing. Uh, the bomb six, like I said, a lot more improved now with Turris. You can have other guys moving down, such as James Neal. Uh, just gives them a lot more depth. So Edmonton, looking at them, I think they're looking a lot better heading into this year. Now, the big question for them is goaltending. They have Koskinen. They brought Smith back. They weren't too bad last year. Uh, Koskinen, at least. Smith, definitely shaky at parts. Uh, their goaltending is at least league average i think they make the playoffs but if it's below league average then maybe they're you know in that fifth spot and don't quite make it and then finally at number one i have the toronto maple leafs this isn't like a homer pick or you know just trying to appease the maple leafs fans i actually do think the maple leafs have the best team in this division i like anderson as a goalie some people don't i think he's a solid goalie they improve their defense uh they sign tj brody they bring in goshen to give them a bit of grit um offensively of course they lose andreas Janssen. they lose kasperi kapanen but they have some good young players coming up like nick roberts um, Ikaia was injured a lot of last year. He's going to be coming back. Still led by their superstars like Matthews, Tavares, Marner, Nylander. I think, you know, top to bottom, they're the best team in this division. I think top to bottom, they're easily the best team in this division. So pending some sort of collapse, uh, Toronto should be winning the North. Now we know the Western division, guys. As I mentioned, I think that they're a very top-heavy division. But I'll start with the bottom teams here. So honestly, picking a team to get last in this one was tougher than picking a team to get first. I'm going to go with the LA Kings simply because they were not very good at all last year and they didn't get any better. Kopitar and Doughty both getting older. Same goes for Jonathan Quick. They do have some young players coming up, but we really don't know what to expect. Gabe Lardy looked good, but very small sample size. Alex Turkov might make the team this year. I don't really know what to expect with LA and I really don't think that they want to be an amazing team either. So I think I have them at last and I think that's a safe spot for them. Now after that, I actually have the other Cali team, the Anaheim Ducks, getting second last. They did add Kevin Shankirk in the offseason. But for me, they're another team. Getzlav's not getting any younger. They have a lot of like good players. I'm looking at guys like Raquel, Henrique, some good prospects too, like Sam Steele, Troy Terry. But no one really game breaking. They still have a solid defense. Cam Fowler, Lindholm, Josh Manson. But uh, for me, I don't know. It's just they're kind of like in a mediocre spot where they're like sort of rebuilding, but not quite yet. And I don't know. I just don't really see them making the playoffs. So I have them finishing second last. Um, after that. In the sixth spot there, I have the Arizona Coyotes. I feel bad for them. It's essentially their first pick in last year's draft. It wasn't until the fifth round. They don't have a first round pick next year. And I think it's probably going to be like a top 10 pick. But I'm um, looking at them. I feel like they're in a bit of disarray. Now, I do still think they have more talent than LA and Anaheim. I think they're goaltending better than LA. Not quite as good as Anaheim because they have Gibson. But it's close. Uh, defensively, they still have Ekman Larson, Jarmelson, Chikorin, who I think is a stud a lot of people don't realize. Offensively, I think Kessel had a down year. Even Keller. I think if those guys bounce back a bit they're gonna be competitive but I don't know for me I don't think they quite squeak in now at the five spot I have the Minnesota Wild kind of similar to Arizona not so much the fact they're in disarray more so the fact that they're like a mediocre team honestly because of how top heavy the West is I knew a mediocre team was gonna get in at the four spot um and Minnesota's gonna be fighting I think goaltending for me though Talbot and Staylock I'm not sure how good that's gonna be uh, defensively for them, still the strong suit. Having Suter, Spurgeon, Dumba, and Brodine is a very, very solid top four. But offensively, they lost Stahl for Johansson. They're bringing in Kaprizov, who I think could win the Calder this year. He could be a player for them. Fiala has to keep it up. If Fiala like, drops off at all, that's a big hit to their top six. Uh, they brought in Benino as well uh, for Lukunin, which I think is a definitely better trade for now. Nashville probably wins that one in the future. Um, looking at them, though, again, similar to Arizona. like They're really average team. So I think, you know, they're probably fighting for that spot. Don't quite make it in. The team that's another pretty average team that I think will get in is San Jose Sharks at number four. Reason being, basically, they played so bad last year. They're going to be hungry. I think Carlson and Burns, uh, you can definitely rely on those two guys for 50-game season. As long as neither of them gets injured, uh, they're going to lead you, especially with Edward Vlasic. I think between Dubnik and Jones, one of those two guys has to be playing decent at, at a given time. So you just ride the hot hand between the two of them because they're both 
up and down goalie. So just hopefully when Dubnik's up, Jones down. When Jones is up, Dubnik's down. And you can just kind of rotate between the two of them. Now, offensive depth for them was definitely a big issue last year on top of injuries. So I like to trade for Ryan Donato as well as bringing Patrick Marlowe back. They did lose Joe Thornton, but I think, you know, him and Marlowe probably interchangeable. So if they can stay healthy, I think, you know, they have a solid enough top six. I think if they play well, they have that potential uh, to make it into the playoffs. So I'm betting on their potential essentially in my predictions. Now, next year, I think it's just a different tier. Like you have those teams and then the top three, you have a new tier starting off with the St. Louis Blues. Lost Petrangelo, but replaced him with Tori Krug. So... You know, it's pretty good replacement, I think, after losing elite defenseman like Petrangelo. Still have a very, very solid offense. Uh, Jordan Bainton didn't play too great in, like, the playoffs, but he looked really good, I thought, in the regular season. Um, was still probably the best goalie in the world two years ago, right? During that insane run from January 2019 to June 2019, where they went from last in the league to making the playoffs to winning the Stanley Cup. So if he can even play, like, three quarters of that good, their defense is solid. Their offense is solid. No reason why St. Louis can't be a top three team in this division. Now, after them, it was actually really tough to decide who would go number one. I said it wasn't, but it was pretty tough. Vegas or Colorado, pretty interchangeable for me. I decided to go with Colorado at number two and Vegas at number one. Basically, the reason being, I think Vegas' goaltending is a lot better. Leonard is a starter. Fleury is the backup. Assuming they don't move Fleury before then, um, even if they do, like Leonard, I think, is still a better starter than Grubauer. And if Fleury is the backup, that gives you two really solid goalies to lean on. They added Petrangelo to their defense, which was already good. They do lose Schmidt, but Petrangelo is definitely a big upgrade. Offensively, I think it's very solid, especially uh, when you have such a good defense and goaltender behind him. Um, Colorado, I definitely like their offense better than Vegas. Defensively, I think it's close. I like to pick up a Devin Tays. I also like to trade for Brandon Saad. But again, I think both those teams are so even. I'm looking at the goaltending, which I think you have to give the edge to Vegas. So... Cardo 2, Vegas 1. Now looking at the Central Division, I'm going to start with a bit of a shocker. Finishing in the 8th and last place, I have the Chicago Blackhawks, not the Detroit Red Wings. I think Chicago just got worse during the offseason. They lost Corey Crawford, who's a good goalie. So their goaltenders now are Malcolm Subban and Colin Delia, which isn't great. Uh, defensively, they did add Zadarov, but they had one of the worst defenses in the league, in my opinion, last year. Zadarov doesn't change that much. And then offensively, they lost Saad to do that. Taze and Kane are getting younger. Uh, Strom and Debrinkit both didn't look as good as they had uh, last season. Chicago literally put out a letter to their fans saying how they're entering a rebuild, so I don't think they honestly even mind getting last place to give them the best shot of picking first overall. Now, Detroit, of course, will be the second last place team. I can't have them any higher than that. I do think that we got a little bit better in the offseason for sure. Uh, Thomas Grice is a legit starting goalie. He's not an elite goalie, but he looks pretty good as a starter. And he wants to play too many games, I think, with Bernier behind him. Uh, we also added Stetcher and Merrill to the defense, and our defense needed a lot of help. Um, offensively, Nemestikov, I think, can come in as a second-line center behind Larkin. Bobby Ryan can just add some depth to the team. We were so terrible last year. There's only one place to go, which is up, and I think up will be not last in division, finishing just a little bit above the Chicago Blackhawks. We gotta check my notes here. At number six, I have the Florida Panthers. So they're another team I think got a lot worse in the offseason. I was hoping for their sake they would keep one of Dadnov or Hoffman. Lost Dadnov to Ottawa. Does not look like Hoffman's returning to Florida. Most people are saying he'll probably go to Nashville, but of course he has not signed yet. Now looking at the players they got to replace those guys. They got Patrick Cornfish from Pittsburgh, who's a lot older. Not on the level of Hoffman or Dadnov. Got Wenberg for free, which I thought was a really nice signing. But again, Wenberg's not on their level. Bobrovsky was terrible last year, so in terms of nowhere to go up but up, I don't think Bobrovsky could be any worse, but even if Bobrovsky does play better, unless he's playing like god mode, I really don't see Florida finishing, you know, higher than fifth, definitely um, not making the playoffs. Now, uh, this next spot here, it was, it was actually really tough for me to decide four and five, who was going to make the playoffs and who wasn't, as I think just like the West, the Central has a clear cut, three top teams making the playoffs, the fourth spot's up for grabs, so at number five are the Columbus Blue Jackets, I think they'll be in a very, very close playoff race right until the end. Some to Vancouver in the North Division. I thought getting Max Domi a trade for Josh Anderson was a great deal for them. Now, they did lose Ryan Murray, but usually don't even have Ryan Murray for half the season anyway, so not too big of a deal. They lost Wenberg, so I think Domi's kind of more replacing Wenberg, honestly, than Anderson. As Anderson was injured a lot last year, they still made the playoffs. Uh, defensively, they're still going to be relying heavily on Rowenski and Jones as that top pair. Now, for me, really, the reason I have Columbus 5 and not in the playoffs is because they made the playoffs last year off the backs of insane goaltending. Both Merzlikin and Corby Salo gave them insane goaltending. I'm not sure if they're going to replicate that because both those goalies are just so young. It's hard to say if that was a flash in the pan, if they can be that consistent. Uh, similar, though, to Vegas or what I was saying with the Sharks, the fact that they have two, you can hopefully, you know, when one's hot, you play them. Then when he starts to get cold, the other goalie starts to get hot. 
But really, I think that might have been a bit of a Cinderella story for Columbus last year. And I think they pull it close to a playoff spot this year, but don't quite make it. Um, at the fourth spot, just edging them out, I have the Nashville Predators. Looking at the rosters, I feel like Nashville is just a bit better kind of everywhere. Um, offensively, I like their top six a bit more with Duchesne, Johansson, Forsberg, Arvidsson, uh, Tolvin and Tomasino. A couple young guys might actually uh, push into there. Of course, I mentioned the trade for Luke Kunin. Um, defensively, Roman Yossi is the best defenseman of both those teams. Probably the second best defenseman in the league behind Hedman. Ryan Ellis, Matias Ekholm, Dante Ferrabo is a good young defenseman. Pecorine, I don't think like Bobrovsky could get any worse. Saros maybe uh, can make that step up this year. So looking at the two teams, I think the only spot I like Columbus better is the goaltending, and their goaltending would have to be so, so good, I think. I really push them over Nashville in that final playoff spot. Now, like I mentioned, three top teams in this division. At number three, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. I think they're a solid team throughout the lineup. For them, I think the uh, biggest issue would still be goaltending with Mrazek there as a starter. I like Mrazek, but I uh, look at a lot of the other goalies. I think there's better ones in the division. Reimer's backing him up. Reimer's a pretty solid backup, but again, that's definitely the weak spot for the team. Uh, defensively, they have one of the best decors in the NHL. With Slavin and Hamilton are both definitely top 10 defensemen, whether or not EA thinks so. Uh, you also got Pesci behind them, Jake Gardner, uh, Bray Shea, Hayden Fleury, Jake Bean. It's insane. Like their defensive depth, as well as just their defense in general, is one of the best in the NHL, maybe the best. Um, and offensively, they still have a really solid top six, I think, uh, with Aho, with Sveshnikov, with Teravinen. Uh, you got solid depth, I think, with guys like Jordan Stahl. I feel like Carolina's a lock for a playoff spot, which is what I mean when I say there's such a big gap between the three and four spot in both the Central and the West. Now, number two, I actually have the runner up last year to the Stanley Cup. That's the Dallas Stars. Really like Ben Bishop and Nett. Uh, I think their defense is solid. High skin's only getting better. Uh, Lindell, of course, looks like solid defenseman. Klingberg gives you that offensive production. Offensively, I mean, of course, you got the stars in Ben, Seg, and Radulov. They got a lot of younger players, you know, starting to emerge and uh, kind of carry their worth like Garyanov. So hopefully, you know, everything still clicks for them. They finish second in the division, which I think uh, is more than fair. And then first place in the division, I have the most stacked team in the NHL who finally got done won the cup last year. That's the Tampa Bay Lightning. And so far, they haven't lost a single player from that cup team. Everyone thought they had to lose somebody for sure. How they haven't lost anyone yet, I have no idea. Now, Sorelli and Chernick are both still unsigned. Sergeyev does have a contract. A lot of people were thinking they trade away Johnson. It hasn't happened yet. Um, I'm looking at Cap Friendly right now. They don't have any money. So how are they going to get Sorelli and Chernick signed? I have no idea. Assuming they don't lose a big piece to get those guys signed, like even if it is a Tyler Johnson, they have so many good solid forwards, they can afford to lose one of them uh, to keep the youngest and best one, I think, in Sorelli. And it won't change my prediction at all. They got Vashlovsky and Ned, who's one of the better goalies in NHL. The best defenseman in the NHL and Victor Hedman. Serge has a very good young defenseman. McDonough and Chernick are solid. Offensively, they have they have superstars like Stamkos and Kucherov. And you got probably the best offensive depth in the NHL. Um, Tampa not only wins the Central Division, they're probably still my favorite out uh, win the President's Trophy. Now I say President's Trophy in quotes, I think they'll have the most points of all 31 teams, but I don't actually think a President's Trophy will be awarded this year as the teams are only playing each other within their division, so it wouldn't really make a lot of sense to be the league winner when you only played a quarter of the league, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, so finally guys, my East Division predictions. Now this division, like the North Division, I think is going to be a bloodbath. Um, I had the Devils finishing last because I think that's pretty fair. They lost Taylor Hall, and they were already not a very good team. They haven't gotten much better. Um, they did get Corey Croft, which I think definitely helps their goaltending, but look at the rest of the teams. Uh, they're just the worst team by far, I think, for me. It kind of sucks because they're in a rebuild. They had some hope, and now it looks like they're back in a rebuild. Uh, Jack Hughes, hopefully for the Devils, can step up next year. But even if he does, um, for me, I think they're the worst team in this division. And honestly, I think they're the only team in my mind that I would be shocked if they made the playoffs. The rest of the teams, I definitely could see getting to the playoffs. Now, the one I think is least likely, but still wouldn't be too shocked, uh, is the Buffalo Sabres number 7. I think the sign of Taylor Hall uh, was huge for them. If he plays with Jack Eichel, I think that could really be a dynamic duo. Put, say, Reinhardt on the right wing or even Olofsson. And then the second line, you could have Skinner reunited with Eric Stahl. And then either Reinhardt or Olofsson on the other wing. That gives you a really solid top 6. Uh, defensively, we'll still see what happens. Dalene, I think, is very underrated. Goaltending, I actually thought they might go out and get a guy like Marc-Andre Fleury, Braden Holpe, Jacob Markstrom. It never happened, so goaltending for me... Uh, definitely still an issue for them. Looking at my notes, number six, the New York Rangers. So this is a good young team. I think they're going to be exciting to watch, but I still don't think uh, it'll be enough for them to make the playoffs. They're one of the last teams to kind of squeak into the play-in. Didn't win a single game in the play-in, so of course, won them Lafreniere, who I can't wait to see how good he does. Uh, I think they have awesome, you know, top six with Lafreniere in the mix now, Panarin, just like Jack Hughes. They definitely want Capocacco to take a step up next season. Um, defensively, a lot of young guys. Um, Fox there, D'Angelo, Hayek. 
We'll see what happens. Goaltending, I think Shashirkin looked really good, but he only played 12 games or whatever. So uh, we'll see if that keeps up. So again, I think it'll be a good competitive team, but I think they're going to be a little bit short. Even at the sixth spot, honestly, I think this division is going to be so close. They could only be like three or four spots out of the playoffs. Uh, now number five, I actually have the other New York team, the New York Islanders. Now, I have them missing the playoffs. But you guys have to understand because of how the divisions work, I think they're a better team than San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks are in the West, so they get the playoff spot. Even though the Islanders, I think, will be a better team and finish more points. They'll be fifth in this division, unfortunately, miss a spot. Even though they lost Grice, I think their goaltending will still be really solid with Varlamov and Sorokin coming in. Um, defensively, they lose Taves, but they still have a pretty solid team defense. Offensively, assuming they get Parcel locked up, there's really no reason to think they won't. Um, they'll still be solid. Now, they did lose Johnny Boychuk as well, so they lose him and Taves, but I still think they have pretty solid defense. I, again, I think Sorokin and Grice, it's a pretty, you know, equal move. Offensively, you know, they looked pretty solid next, last year. Again, I think they're going to be a good, solid, competitive team like the Rangers, but I think they fall just a little short of a playoff spot. Now, at the fourth spot in the East Division, I have the Philadelphia Flyers. I think Carter Hart's one of the best young, probably the best young goalie um, in the NHL. Defensively, they looked really good last year. I feel like Travis Sandheim's really stepped up. Same with Philip Meyer. Ghost of Spare looked terrible, but if he can even just bounce back a little bit, that'll really improve their defense. Provorov as well looked like a true stud. Uh, number one defenseman in my mind. Now offensively as well, they're really clicking. Drew Voracek, Kuchuria is one of the best two-way forwards in the league. Uh, Konechny really made a step up. If Patrick's healthy and playing, I think he could actually um, help invigorate that offense as well. So for me, uh, Phillies for sure a playoff team. Now after that, number three spot are the Washington Capitals. Now I should say, I think all four playoff teams for me in the East are going to be very, very close. Like I mentioned, I think one through seven is going to be closer than like one through four, say, in the Western Conference, honestly. Um, so at number three, I have the Washington Capitals. Of course, lost Brain Holtby, but he was a little bit shaky last year anyway. We'll see how Samsonov does in net. Um, defensively, I still think they're pretty solid. Carlson, of course, um, offensive powerhouse. Offensively, I mean, I still really like their top six there. Um, Ovechkin's going to put in, even in a shortened season, they'll probably still find a way to score 40 goals. So uh, Capitals, no reason to think they won't be a playoff team. Same goes for their big rival there in the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I really like the move for them, getting Kasperi Kapanen. Pretty expensive, but uh, really helps give them some top six depth. Um, I think defensively, they brought in Mike Matheson. I'm not so sure about that one, but, you know, we'll see. He does have decent offensive games. So maybe he can help them out. Lost Matt Murray, but Tristan Jerry looked just as good last year. So if Jerry can keep it up, if their defense can hold, if Latang stays healthy, they still have Crosby, Malkin, Gensel. They're a playoff team for sure if everyone, you know, plays how they should. And then first place actually in the East, I have the Boston Bruins who won the President's Trophy last year. They did lose Tory Krug, but uh, Krug was injured for a bit last year and the Bruins still played well. They got Raskin Ned, who I think is the only goalie, one of the best backups in the league in the lack. Their offense, they still have that insane line of Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak. They have added depth now in Andre Kasha. They got Charlie Coyle, David Krejci, Jake DeBrusque. Even with the loss of Tori Krug, I still think they're a very solid team from top to bottom. And if Chara does return, that just gives them even more defensive depth. But of course, we'll have to wait and see on that. But even if without him returning, I think uh, Boston will still finish first in that East Division. So right there, guys, are my predictions for the 2021 NHL regular season. If I wanted to give you guys quick playoff predictions, I'll just pick like who's going to come out of each division. As you guys don't know, the way the playoffs work is one plays four, two plays three in each division. The two winners play, and then there's like a division winner that comes out of each one um, for a semifinal. Then after the semifinal, of course, you'll have the final. So quick playoff predictions here. I think the Maple Leafs come out of the north. I think the Avalanche come out of the west, even though they're the two seed. I think Tampa Bay comes out of the central. And then I think the Penguins come out of the east, even though I have them being the two seed. Um, I'm not sure who's going to play who, uh, but of those four teams, I'm going to have the Carter Avalanche win the Stanley Cup. There's my early predictions, guys, for the 2021 NHL regular season, as well as the playoffs. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about my predictions, as well as who you think is going to come out on top of each division, and of course, win that Stanley Cup. As always, guys, hopefully enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.